Okay, so we're looking at how can psychology affect performance again. So this is our still our second critical question for factors affecting performance. I want you to remember that your learning goal is to understand how psychology affects performance and that your success criteria, so how you know that that's going to happen, is that you can explain how motivation, anxiety and arousal affect performance and why psychological strategies are used to improve performance. Today we're going to be looking at our dot point of anxiety and arousal. This is our second dot point that comes straight after motivation. Now, the learning goals for this dot point are for you to know the difference between anxiety and arousal. I want you to be able to understand the different types of anxiety, and I want you to identify different sources of stress. In addition to this, I also would like you to understand the inverted U hypothesis for optimal arousal and I want you to understand the different ways that anxiety and arousal impact sports performance. Now, our syllabus here has a number of things. So let's have a look here at our students learn about. Here it says that our students need to learn about anxiety and arousal. You need to know the difference between trait and state anxiety. You need to know different sources of stress. And you need to know about optimal or up optimum arousal levels. Now, with that information, what you need to be able to do is then you'll learn too. So here you need to be able to explain the difference between anxiety and arousal in terms of the effects on performance. Now here's a kind of a, a buzzkill. Anxiety, negative for performance. Arousal, generally positive, provided you're in the right spot. So, now your success criteria. So from this video and from your activities you do in class, how will you know that you actually have learnt about anxiety and arousal. So what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to define and identify similarities and differences between anxiety and arousal. You need to define trait and state anxiety. You need to correctly identify a number of different sources of stress in sports specific situations. You also need to explain the inverted U hypothesis and its effects on performance as well as being able to explain why anxiety and arousal affect performance differently. So when it comes to anxiety, anxiety by definition is psychological. It is all in the mind. Okay, So a psychological response uh, of anxiety is akin to or very much the same as uh, nervousness or worry. Um, so it's when people get anxious before a game or when there's a particular thing happening in a game that causes more pressure. So if you're going to take a penalty shot uh, for a World Cup, for example, suddenly you're going to be very anxious just before you take that shot because of the pressure that gets added onto you. And generally, anxiety, negative. It is not good for your performance. However, when it comes to arousal, now arousal is different to anxiety because anxiety, all in the head, whereas arousal is all about the body. Arousal is a physiological response. Now, I know it's hard sometimes to distinguish between psychological and physiological, but it is important that you can work out that difference, okay? So psychological, mind, physiological, body. I don't know how you want to think about remembering it. Uh, for me, I know that physical is about my body, and if I go to a psych, it's about my mind, okay? Now, in terms of arousal and performance, Arousal is essentially, by definition, a response similar to getting excited before an event. So it's slightly different to being anxious. It's that excitement. It's that higher heart rate. Uh, it's that, um, you know, that anxiety is kind of like your butterflies are in your stomach, whereas your arousal is when you're getting hyped up. You're like, yes, I can't wait to go out and play. I really want to go and beat this opponent. That's arousal, where you are actually physically getting ready for the, for the game coming up. Now this needs to be optimum in order for your um, performance to benefit from it. Okay, so arousal, there's a particular level of arousal that will be best for your particular sport and for you in particular within that sport to then help you to perform at your best. So let's have a look back at anxiety. Now anxiety, there's a couple of different types, right? So let's have a look at trait anxiety. Trait anxiety is anxiety that is part of a person's character. That is, it's part of their general state of being. Um, here you think of a person who might be a warrior, someone who might be a bit of a stress head, that's someone who has trait anxiety. It's part of who they are on a normal day-to-day -day basis where they might worry about particular things. State anxiety, on the other hand, comes in response to a situation or a stimulus. 
So having to take a penalty shot that I mentioned earlier in the World Cup is an actual uh, situation that might raise anxiety levels, okay? And that is state anxiety. So trait anxiety, part of your character, versus state anxiety, which is all about uh, responding to a situation, okay? So trait, character, state, situation. Let's move on now to a couple of different sources of stress. So sources of stress are always athlete specific uh, and depend upon uh, previous experience. So if you're gonna go and take that penalty shot and you've missed last time you tried to take a penalty spot, then that it becomes a source of stress, makes your anxiety go up even higher. However, if you have done this many times before and you have scored it many times before, then it's not as anywhere near as be a stressor. Athlete specific in terms of uh, the support provided, because remember, stress does not have to happen on the field. Stress can happen at home. So if you have a brand new baby at home uh, and your husband is not helping you look after it and you don't have a supportive mother-in-law or anything that's gonna come and help you look after your child, then it's gonna be hard for you to get out to training. It's gonna be hard for you to go and uh, perform and be focused while you're performing and not be distracted by things that are back at home. And so that becomes a source of stress for you uh, because you're thinking about other things, you're worried about something else, so that when you actually then are performing on the field, it is not as good as it could be. Of course, support also refers to the support provided by coaches and training staff to help the athlete to perform at their best. And an athlete who has supportive training and coaching staff will then be able to cope with the pressures of situations. So you'll often see in uh, the Australian Open, for example, the athlete look towards uh, their coach and their training staff uh, when the pressure is on so that they understand that they have some support from them before they can continue and those who get good support from their training staff and their coaches will then perform better in the situation. Another source of stress is the expectations that are laid out upon an athlete. So some athletes, they don't have much expectation on them. If you are going down to the park with a bunch of mates just to muck around, there's not gonna to be too many uh, expectations upon you, okay? Whereas if you happen to be you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, who has come back from injury and you're expected to go out there and score goals and perform uh, at your very best, then you suddenly have sources of stress from your fans, from your um, your coach, from your other players in your team, and even from yourself, you're gonna cause your own kind of stress there where you're saying, I need to perform, I need to perform. And so when you go out there, um, all that pressure then becomes a source of stress. Okay, the same kind of pressures will apply uh, to um, athletes in particular game situations where pressure is put on them. Okay, so if you think back to tennis, if you're going to serve out the match, uh, then you have a lot of pressure on your serve each time you hit it. And that pressure is a source of stress which increases your anxiety. Okay, so stress increases anxiety and is generally not good for performance, okay? Uh, and so athletes develop strategies to help them deal with that stress so that they can actually focus on uh, making sure their arousal is in the right spot rather than worrying about anxiety and things that are causing stress to their body. But strategies about managing anxiety and making sure that you're in optimal arousal and staying motivated is your next stop point. Now, uh, stress less. People who are confident, stress less. People who are positive, stress less. And people who have a can-do attitude will stress less. Okay, so remember, stress is all about um, the individual athlete. It's all about how they respond and think about things. So if an athlete is very confident, and confidence normally comes from uh, repeated uh, exposure to success, and that will make people confident. So if you have scored lots of goals before, when you get up to take another shot, you are gonna be confident that you're gonna score another goal. Okay, now we move on to arousal, and you need to know about optimal arousal, okay, or optimum arousal, kind of the same thing. So. Optimal arousal is all about being in the zone or getting psyched up for the game, okay? But more specifically, it's that in the zone is that when they're focused and they're really ready to go out and perform. Now, your level of arousal and where you sit uh, in terms of how much arousal you need depends a lot on the sport, okay? So if you are involved in a really highly intense sport, then your arousal needs to be a lot higher than someone who is not in a highly intense sport. So let's compare, for example, uh, if you do UFC fighting, right? Your arousal levels, when you go into that octagon, you need to be at a very high level of arousal because you need to be very wary to every movement that's happening. Your blood should be pumping. You need to be very, very hyped up and excited. Whereas if you're going out to do lawn bowls, right? Lawn bowls requires a lot lower level of arousal 
um, because you don't need that kind of fast focus. You actually need a more sustained, intense focus on a particular skill. Okay, and so that then shifts us over to our skill difficulty as well. So your level of arousal also will vary depending on the level of skill difficulty. So if you are performing a skill that is highly difficult, right? So if you are a, a diver in the Olympics and you're going to dive from the high board or from a springboard or something, you need a lot of intense focus for that skill to be performed. Whereas if you're doing a lot of lower level skill, like in ice hockey, for, for example, where you are ice skating a lot of the time and controlling a puck and passing it. And I'm not saying that these are not skilled, but the intensity of the skill or the difficulty of the skill is not as high as that dive uh, where the person's doing a triple backflip spinning around and making sure they enter that uh, water perfectly. Uh, the same will occur in cricket, for example, uh, where a batsman will often be very focused uh, on their skill as the bowler comes into bowl. The bowler is often very focused too, but the fielders, their focus is slightly different. They need a more sustained in, uh, type of focus rather than an intense focus. Uh, and then we can shift that too into other sports like AFL, football, um, soccer, rugby league, rugby union, all those types of sports, netball, basketball, they actually have, uh, you know, require a more sustained, enduring uh, level of focus, but that's going to shift too within the game. So even though they, because the game's kind of long, but the game has different circumstances that will come up. So if you are playing rugby league, but then you have to convert the try, suddenly you go from a general level of um, focus and arousal requirement to a very difficult skill which is going to require you to control your arousal right you've been out there tackling there that's a high level of arousal if you then go into doing a conversion you need to lower your levels of arousal so that your performance is better and also the length the length of the the game if it's a longer game you need lower levels of arousal to start with because you need to last the whole time whereas if it's a short intense thing like fighting is often short and intense uh, then you need higher levels of arousal. The other thing that you need to note with this graph is that the optimal level of arousal, if you are too aroused for your sport, your performance will decrease, whereas if you are not aroused enough, you also won't have a good performance. So it's really important to know the level of arousal that's required for your sport uh, and make sure that you actually reach that level of arousal. So if you're a UFC fight, for example, and you get too hyped up, then you're actually going to be a little bit distracted and not be able to focus as well as you need to. But if you're not aroused enough and your body's not really ready to go, then you're going to get out there and not be fast enough and not have your nervous system responding fast enough to things. And the same for things like grass hockey. If you uh, are involved in this sport and your arousal is not high enough, your performance will decrease. Uh, but if you become too aroused for your performance, then again, your performance will decrease. And that's how you, why you can see on this graph the inverted U. And this is the inverted U hypothesis where... Uh, not enough arousal means that your performance will decrease. Too much arousal means that your performance will decrease. And therefore, you need to make sure you're at optimal or optimum arousal, uh, which means that your performance will be at its best. So that's our graph. That is anxiety and arousal. <laughs>